Hey everyone, welcome to today's show. Today we've got Tamara on with us. Tamara is somebody I've known for a good few years now and she's one of these people that whenever I have a conversation with her, like we always end up talking about something we're so passionate about. So I'm really, really looking forward to her sharing uh, a conversation with us today. So Tam, do you want to share a little bit about who you are and introduce yourself for us? Uh, yeah, so um, yes, I'm Tamara, um, as you just said, and um, I am basically uh, studying to be a nutritional therapist. So um, I, you know, nutrition is a massive passion of mine and um, I come from the fitness industry anyway. So, um, you know, I have some nutrition background and uh, yeah, I just, you know, I'm, I'm in my final year as a, a nutritional therapy student and uh, I'm excited to get started with it all. So thank you very much for having me on your podcast. You're most welcome. So obviously you mentioned there you've got a bit of a fitness background as you now hone in right in on that, those nutrition skills. So what, what kind of things were you doing before now, just to give our listeners some idea? Um, yeah, so I come from um, the fitness industry. So I started studying um, to be a personal trainer actually um, when I was 19. So um, from the age of about 19 till, um, God, I'm 34 now, so it's been quite a long time. Um, but yeah, I, I've been basically uh, personal training and teaching fitness courses, personal training courses, nutrition courses. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically, you know, um, where I come from. That's my that's my background. Um, but I always found um, nutrition just a really you know key part of what I loved to teach. Um, and you know they say you know if if you want to know what you're interested in, then just look at your bookshelf. And you know my bookshelf always had um, two things. It always had um, lots of books on nutrition and lots of books on self development. So um, those two things I really, really love. Um, so, you know, you know, teaching fitness over the years, um, you know, the, the, my passion for those two things really helps. Um, so, yeah, but I, I have to say by, by the time I got to age about 30, um, you know, I was teaching fitness courses and I was thinking, you know, what? I want something more. I want, um, you know, is there something more that I can be doing? So, yeah, that's when I decided to start um, doing my nutrition course. And, you know, it's a three year course. Um, I had to take a break in the middle because, you know, I had my daughter. She's 17 months now. Um, so, yes, she's getting it's crazy. It's crazy how <laughs> time flies. Um, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, I've been I've been studying. and I'm in my final year and I'm just I can't wait to, to just get started with clients and um, you know, to start offering online programs and yeah, there's just, there's so many things I can't wait to do. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. One of the things I love about where you're coming from is the fact that you've got that practical experience, like working with clients as well. So you see what's needed out there and then that's also kind of combined with your passion. So you, I have no doubt you're going to have people knocking on your door for advice, especially after listening to this as well. So what we're really curious about is picking your brain a little bit on, a, there was a video that you posted on your own social media oh, a week or so ago about having a healthy mindset when it comes to nutrition and an unhealthy mindset when it comes to nutrition. So yeah. tell me a little bit, tell, tell people that maybe haven't seen that video, like what, what was that all about? Where are you coming from with that? Um, well, I, you know, I have personal experience with that. Um, I, I believe that, you know, to um, have a healthy um, lifestyle and to have a healthy diet, um, it all sort of starts with the mindset. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, most people listening, um, they have a fairly, um, you know, healthy mindset when it comes to food. But, you know, some people don't. And um, I was actually one of those people. Um, and, and that's something that I, I wanted to share um, with my audience, um, simply because it's um, it's just it's it's really important if you want to move forward with a healthy diet. So um, yeah, I mean I I made the video because I've basically had both mindsets. So I've had a positive mindset with food, and I've had um, a negative mindset with food. Um, I mean now obviously I I have a positive mindset with food um you know I feel you know completely relaxed about it and you know it's you know I, I really enjoy 
you know, the health benefits that I get from eating well. But, um, but yeah, again, like I'd say, you know, growing up, um, I, you know, my family had a good relationship with food. Um, so did I, but then again, you know, you hit a certain age sometimes, and sometimes you're not sure what the triggers are, but, um, I got to about age 19. Um, and I think, you know, that was when I left full-time college. Okay. Um, I started my first job. Uh, I was doing sort of administrative duties, as you do at age 19. And mm. again, I'm not sure what it was about um, those that particular year, but suddenly I had this fixation that I wanted to, you know, I didn't feel I was good enough until I had, you know, in, until I looked better, until, you know, my body shape looked better. And, you know, it's quite sad, isn't it? You know, at the time, you know, looking back, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. But uh, what, sad, I love, that, what I love about that is that you've said, like, looking back, you can see that now, which shows what a massive shift you've already had there. Like, yeah. what, um, what would you say to somebody that's maybe experiencing that now? So they're listening to this and they're thinking they're not good enough until they look a certain way or feel a certain way in terms of their body shape and appearance. What would you say to them now knowing what you know? Um, that, do you know what? It all comes from how you feel about yourself and not what anyone else thinks. Um, you just have to work on feeling better about how you are in your own skin and you know that that to me you know if you if you live well and you know from my perspective if you eat well and you know if you just work on yourself then you know confidence comes with that but then also age as well so you know anyone who's sl slightly younger um you know you you also find that you know as you get older you know you do send you do tend to learn a bit more about yourself um you know and get more comfortable with yourself so you know i definitely found that coming into my 30s um I, teens oh gosh I, I really feel for teenagers and you know because your your mind is all over the place isn't it um but you know it does come with age and it comes with just you know being confident in yourself and um you know working on yourself and just doing the best you can um nice. yeah, yeah um I want to kind of really revisit what you said there about um, like eating well and having that kind of like negative or positive uh, mindset towards food, towards mm -hmm. nutrition. Um, I'm sure a lot of people who are listening to this um, can obviously relate to that massively. Um, yeah. But obviously, we, we know that everyone has a different perception on what is like good or bad or what is positive or negative. So when you when you had your negative uh, kind of relationship with food, what did that look like for you? Oh gosh. Um, well, I mean, when it when it hit its peak. So so basically, I'll I'll just say that um, I I was in a sort of um, you know I wanted to get as slim as I could, as probably you know a lot of people do at some point. So I was in quite a bad cycle of um, eating as little as I could and exercising as much as I could. And um, you know, in in a in a kind of young nineteen year old brain, you know, you think that it's just easy. You just do that, and then you know, you have the you know the the physique and you know the lifestyle that you think you're going to get with it. Um, but obviously, it doesn't work like that. So um, you know, my I would go through cycles of overeating as well. So undereating and then overeating. And how an unhealthy mindset looked to me was. Um, it was all I thought about. So um, it was a kind of fixation um, on food, um, a lot of secrecy around food. Um, you know, uh, you know, I, I didn't like it if, you know, my family saw me go to the cupboard. I, I used to feel really uncomfortable, you know, the kitchen cupboard. Um, you know, feeling, uh, you know, awkward about how much I'm eating and, you know, in public spaces and, um, it was just, it was, for me, it was the fixation, the mental fixation on it. It was absolutely exhausting. And, you know, there were days when I thought, you know, I, I have no idea how I'm going to get out of this. Like, it was just such a strong cycle. And um, do you know what? That lasted, um, I'd say, into my early 20s, 21, 22, 23, was probably at its absolute peak. Um, so, I mean... <laughs> I, I think a healthy mindset is when you're, you know, it's it's not even 
you know, food is not even, you know, it's something you appreciate, it's something you enjoy, but it's also something you don't even really think about at the same time, you know, you can kind of eat and then move on. Whereas um, for me, eating, um, I'd either really congratulate myself because, you know, yes, you know, I managed to stay away from, you know, the chocolates and cakes, um, or it would just be, you know, huge shame um, after eating something that I shouldn't have. Um, so, I mean, that's what it, it looked like. It was it was quite bad. Um, but then as my 20s progressed, it, it kind of got less and less and less, but it did take years to finally recover um, by about oh. age 29. Mm. At what point did you realise you might have had a problem when it comes to food, your relationship with food? Um, did you actually own it then that, yes, this is a problem? Um, yeah, um, I'd say uh, probably not straight away um, when it started. Um, I, I think back in the day, um, you know, probably a year into it, I just thought, you know, oh, you know, oh, it's okay. I'm just being weak today. You know, I'm overeating today. Or I'm just, I'm just being weak. I just, I need to be stronger tomorrow. Um, but then admitting when I had a problem, um, that was probably when it was at its absolute peak, um, probably 22, 23. Um, you know, I, I didn't admit it to anyone in particular, um, but yes, I, I certainly admitted it to myself. And, you know, it was, um, you know, it's, it was tough, but, you know, it, it didn't really change anything, you know, at the time, you know, admitting it to myself just sort of, you know, just sort of made it you know more concrete that I had a problem but I could never comfortably say it was an eating disorder but it, it kind of was yeah listen like it's so huge like, I'm so happy and really appreciate you sharing this because so many people experience these things and they do it so quietly which is why I kind of asked that question of like when did you realize it was a problem for you because this isn't a problem that you experienced for a a, a week or a few months this is this is years this is like chunks of your life it is, right yeah it is it, it kind of it, it builds up over years but then also hopefully when when it does go um it it dies down over years like it, it doesn't just turn on and turn off um it really is something that you need to um you know ease yourself out of and you know even towards the end of my journey with it um you know i still you know even if i was feeling stronger and i was feeling like i was becoming more de uh, more detached from the problem um i still had to wake up in the morning and i still had to make a conscious decision to to not overeat today you know um i'm happy to say i don't even think about that stuff anymore but um it does take years yeah it's a years thing what support did you need to get to this point like did you ever speak to somebody outside or was this something you really just kind of found your own way following whatever it was you was reading so you said like self-development books were there yeah. on that show. i was reading so many self-development books at that time um but i have to say i you know i think what started my journey out of it was just meeting my husband i think that was it um, it's hard to say what exactly was it was, but um, I think if I was to say it was anything, I think it was it was meeting him, and I think that's simply because any if 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 something good happens in your life, you know, um, I think that might help. It, it kind of helps change things a little bit. And you know, my husband, he has no, he doesn't even, you know, he he eats to live. He's that type. You know those times. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm the opposite. I live to eat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he um he just eats to live. Yeah. This so I, like, yeah. when I, I I don't know if I told you this, I'm sure our this is would have heard this on somebody who was somewhere on the line, but when I first met John, he used to like literally eat. I remember because we used to work together and we was in this staff room and he was eating from his lunchbox, he had like nine boiled eggs. And I was sitting there in there, I don't know what I was eating, like chicken and salad or whatever I don't know but I was sitting there and I was looking at what he was eating and he was like one boiled egg after the other I was like, I was like dude how why like is that enjoying that like, you enjoying that and then I found out that he was eating that every single day for the last like period yeah. of his life that was my oh, snack God. between breakfast and lunch <laughs> that was my second of nine meals that uh, on that day at that time when I was eating but you used to be so oh, rigid 
on what yeah. he was eating. And right? Yeah, I, exactly. I was the opposite. Instead of eating less and training more, I was eating more and training more. And kept thinking more is better. Um, yeah. If I eat more, I'm going to basically put on more muscle mass. Uh, if I train more, I'm going to put on more muscle mass. And the end result was I didn't. <laughs> I spent so much money, so much time eating that much for very little to no return. And yeah. So, so basically, John, do you do you live to eat, or do you eat to live? You eat to live, don't you? No. Yeah. Now, a bit of both. Um, <laughs> now is a bit more adventurous. A bit more adventurous now, definitely. Um, a bit more. Okay. Yeah. So I'm still got a bit of structure in my food but I do I'm not worried about I don't really care about what I eat now in terms no, of rigid, yeah for me it's more again it's more about I eat um for I feel what my body needs um following uh, following something which I know you spoke about I think with the 80 20 rule yeah um, I like to keep most of my food as nutritious and when I mean nutritious what kind of my body responds to well and then the yeah. other 80 percent is Whatever I feel like having, basically, right? so <laughs> whether it's ice cream, donuts, crisps, whatever. As long as if, if I feel like having it, I'll have it, and I'm um, and I don't think yeah. anymore. And and doesn't that you know, like what we were speaking about before, doesn't that just take you know that takes years to 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 kind of you know relax into that sort of pattern, you know, being able to just eat when you feel like it, you know, eat what you want as well. Um, you know, for people from our background, you know, we come from fitness, so you know. I was surrounded by diets and you know lots and lots of exercise so it doesn't it just take it takes years to to kind of you know settle into a healthy eating pattern you know if you were on the sort of journey you were on and me as well it just takes years yeah yeah definitely it took me about a decade to realize that um you, you can be flexible and more comfortable and just enjoy what you eat instead of being <laughs> crazy strict and rigid with what you're doing um, and just causing yourself more suffering than you need to. And it's so good having a support system. The fact that your husband was that for you, I think is, is obviously been huge in, in, on your own journey as well. So, I mean, that's why um, I, you know, now one of my major principles and one of the things that I really want to bring to my clients um, is just the idea that you know you don't need to restrict um, any foods that you eat um, you know especially if you really love certain foods that you know you probably feel like you shouldn't be eating um, you know don't don't restrict it and you know that's something that I'm really going to be championing going forwards um, because you know I, I know what it, it's like to restrict and you know that can lead to, to bigger problems if um, you go down that road too much so um, puts, so yeah, that is my principle. It just puts that temptation even closer, doesn't it? Like the minute you say you can't have it, it's want you it. want it, right? It just seems to be like how we're conditioned. So that's that's definitely a game changer mm. moving forwards. And there's so many like conflicting things you see out there with people saying the complete opposite. Then no, you must be strict, you must do this, or you must spend six months on this kind of diet or three months on that kind of diet. And I think having a realistic approach is absolutely essential. And um, I think your clients are gonna get massive results with you just just with that as one of one of your guiding principles is going to be huge. Yeah, it's um you know it's it's a life it's a lifestyle that um you know people need to adopt you know um, a healthy eating lifestyle. So you know there are diets out there, and you know they, there are very effective diets out there, but um they're not um you know most people can't keep them up forever, and you know I believe that you know you need to have a diet that you can see yourself having for the rest of your life and um you know that includes all of those yummy treats as well it just does <laughs> exactly you're quite hot on the 80 20 rule aren't you can you explain that for anybody of this listening that's never heard of it before yes yeah, so um the 80 20 rule um it's a very uh, it's a very popular rule and um, so people have most likely heard of it um probably outside of this but um basically it's a principle where um, you know, you eat 80% uh, of the time you eat well, um, you feed your body with nutritious, lovely foods, um, and then 20% of the time you allowed yourself um, some treats. Um, so, you know, that can be 80-20 of a day, or it can be 80-20 of a week, or it could be 80-20 of a month, you know, however you prefer to, to play it. 
um, then that's completely up to you. Um, but basically, the, the 20 is, um, you know, it's, it's different for everybody. So not everyone's 20 is going to be the same. So, for example, um, you know, if, if you have a slice of cake, let's say, um, and you feel no reaction, you feel no, you know, uh, difficulties in your tummy, no, no aches or pains or anything like that, um, then, you know, that's, that's great. You know, that can definitely be part of your 20. Um, but if you find that, you know, after you have a slice of cake that you feel a bit unwell, you don't feel too good, you know, you know, cake doesn't seem to agree with you, then, you know, you might have to start thinking about reducing that amount of cake that you have and call that your 20 so everyone's 20 is is completely different and i would only just kind of advise people to you know just just you know be real be real with yourself um you know uh, you don't want to push it past that 20 because you want 80 percent of just really good um you know foods that's really going to feed your cells and bring you know clear thinking and um you know really good um you know results in your body but um, yeah, the 20 is, is, is definitely there. And, you know, I even go as far as to say, you know, if it helps you, you know, make it mandatory, make it something that you, you schedule in. So, you know, that, that actually helps me, you know, I, I still have my 20 every day. So every day when I sit in front of the telly at night, in front of Netflix, um, I have that 20. And and it's usually it's usually chocolate or something like that. Um, it's all about the chocolate. Yeah, it's, it's all about chocolate for me. I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but um, but yeah, I I have that twenty every day. And if I don't, then something's missing. Something's missing from my day. Um, so so yeah, like you know, I, I I that's what I want to kind of push forwards for people but you know if someone can you know live a perfectly you know healthy life um you know without that 20 then go for it you know you go for it you know have a really clean diet um but if you're like me and you need some treats then i would say the 20 you know just have it schedule it in you know enjoy it it's great <laughs> no need to feel guilty for no. it right I'm, I'm curious to know your take on emotional eating because i had uh let's say like a little stint of emotional eating uh what maybe six years ago five six years ago and i was basically i wasn't taking care of myself very emotionally in the way that i ought to mentally i wasn't very self-aware at the time so i was being consumed by other different types of stresses and that was something that i really kind of got myself into without consciously realizing right obviously a part of me knew that i i was eating these it was tim tams was my thing uh -huh. i don't know if you know those things um yeah. but that, that was my thing um and yeah it just got to the point where actually i got i, I ate to the point that i made myself physically sick and that for me was a massive eye-opener because i never known to myself to have any issue when it comes to food or anything but that was a, an outlet that i was i was kind of craving to get that sense of peace i guess at the time mm -hmm. so yeah. what would you say to somebody um or what are your thoughts first of all on emotional eating and how could you potentially help somebody knowing what you know now um do you know what it, when emotional eating is based around the idea that you just want to change the way you feel. So, you know, when you were going through what you were going through, I can I can bet 100% that when you were overeating at the time, you probably, there was something probably that you were feeling that you weren't comfortable with. Yeah. So then to start eating, that would usually bury it. And, you know, I, I've certainly, you know, been through the same, obviously. Um, so, it, it really is just there to cover up an emotion that you're not wanting to deal with. Um, and sometimes eating just changes your mood. It just makes you happy and, you know, suddenly everything's OK. Yeah. Um, so first of all, it would be recognizing that, um, recognizing, OK, so I want to reach for, you know, a tin of biscuits right now and I'm, I'm ready to really go for it. Um, hang on. What am I feeling? And, and to just be present with yourself for a second and just think, what emotion am I trying to hide at the moment? What am I trying to escape? Um, that's the first thing, just recognizing what emotion that is. And it could be just one emotion. Yep. Or it could be several, 
So it could be, you know, the fact that, you know, you probably eat when you're bored or you probably eat when you're um, upset or even happy. That could be a reason why people want to overeat. Um, so just be present with that feeling. Um, and then what I would advise um, people to do is to, to maybe uh, think about what they can do instead. Yeah. So um, and, and then, you know, they say habits, you need to repeat them over and over again. I, I can't remember how many times, like 500 times or something till it becomes like a regular thing. Um, you know, you need to repeat it over and over again. So your brain just needs to rewire. So um, if instead, when you feel that emotion and you feel you want to reach for the biscuits, um, just think, OK, let me try uh, reading a book instead. And the more you do that, the more your brain will start to reconnect and it will start to, you know, make it a habit. Um, you know, it could be exercise. Um, exercise is a good one to use because that definitely changes your mood um, for the better. Um, you know, even just having a bath or just, you know, just have a nap, you know, just change your mood, change the situation. Exactly. It's so interesting that you say that because that was that was the key. One of the key things that helped me kind of come through that was, first of all, like you said, being present, actually pay attention to what am I what am I actually feeling? What is really going on here? Yeah. That, so it's, that not was, like, it. it's not easy to recognize it, you know, not, not unless you want to. Unless right? you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You when things get a bit hard. We don't want to. <laughs> right. We, we Like you said, the word hide. I think is very apt like you said because a lot of the, a lot of the time people don't want to admit how they're feeling because when they do then they really do have to deal with it so yeah. I completely agree with you that's definitely the first thing so acknowledging what it is uh, was a big game changer for me and then obviously then learning how to let go of that emotion and yeah. part of that is obviously doing some deeper inner work but also like you said is creating new more empowering habits that are actually going to be more helpful than harmful as you go through that. And this goes for all, all bad habits, you know. Um, so let's say, um, just say that drinking, smoking, or just just anything else that is considered, you know, not a great habit to have. Um, it goes for those as well, you know. If there's usually an emotion that you know you're trying to to fight off or bury, um, so you know it goes for those as well. Those types of habits too. Nice. Definitely. Um, so it's interesting, obviously, like you say. Uh, feel like about bad habits, um, good habits, and we've been talking a lot about treats being like sweets, chocolates, cakes, mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, like I'm kind of like a big believer on there's no such thing as good or bad when it comes to food, yeah. but there's actually good, good or bad habits, so like yeah. you've actually spoken about. So, what's your because a lot of people demonize certain foods as this food is bad for you or this is bad for you. So, what, what's your take on kind of um, that perception of good and bad food? What do you think? What sort of effect do you think that has on kind of the general public mentally when they when they're looking to change their diet habits and they're looking to kind of eat as they they would call healthy? Yeah. Um, do you know what? Emotionally, um, you know that there are no good and bad foods, and and that's the best way to to go forwards, I believe. Um, because you know if you start labeling foods as good or bad, um, then you know. The, the bad ones start to become a bit more, you know, exotic. <laughs> they start to become a bit more alluring. <laughs> um, so I would say emotionally, um, there are no good and bad, you know, um, you know, and, and, you know, from my perspective now, you know, having a very good relationship with food, you know, I don't look at the chocolates that I eat and think, oh, this is, this is bad. Um, I just think, yeah, this is what I eat usually. <laughs> so, um, so there, there is no good and bad um but you know obviously you know on a as long as you've got that 80 as long as you've got the 80 because you know as long as you're feeding your body healthy nutritious food every single day um and you know in high volumes you know like vegetables i'm all i'm, I'm a veggie pusher at home so i'm always I, 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 Videos. I've never known somebody <laughs> so excited about vegetables than Tamara. There's so much to know about them. I think we might have to do another podcast one day just about vegetables. Yeah. Like, how good they are. Vegetable podcast. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Um, yeah, it's just I, I'm a massive veggie pusher at home. So, you know, like, you know, eating them in high volumes is a big deal in my house. Um, 
my husband goes crazy. He's just like, you know, this is too much. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat it. You know, I feed him my smoothies every morning. I'm just like, a smoothie's there. And and if he's if he's left it and he hasn't had it that day, I'm just like, I'm following him round with it. I'm just like, eat <laughs> <drink it." laughs> Your husband is oh, obviously God. super healthy, I imagine now. Oh, well, I hope so, yeah, because I really push that stuff on him. But you know, we but again, you know, it that that's that's what my 80 looks like. So my 80, and and this is what I'd recommend to anyone, you know, if you're an absolute angel for 80% of your time, you know, then you know the 20 is not bad. You know, it's it's something to look forward to. It's um, you know, it's it's just something you relax with and sometimes it does change your mood at the moment at the time and you're just like okay so I can allow that um it's yeah that that's that's how I feel about the the good and bad just you know try not to think about it that way I would say yeah 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 for sure I could say it's one thing I always try to um tell my clients as well is like you can have what you enjoy as yeah. long as you have it in moderation like I could say if you're feeding your body those nutritious foods when you do feed it what we call the empty calorie foods, your body's not going to have such a reaction or a negative impact um, to that, to, to those empty calories or to those. Your body can actually your body, cope. Yeah, it, your right? body can cope and digest it um, properly. And that's kind of the key is like everyone says it, moderation. <laughs> I've been saying it for decades, moderation, moderation. But moderation, like you said earlier, is different. Everyone's 20 is different. So mm-hmm. like my 20 is very different from Charlotte's 20. Although I like to try and keep, keep up with his 20. Up, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there's your portion. No, 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 no. I want, I want your portion. John does most of the cooking in our house. He's a really good cook. So oh, good. You're so lucky. You're so lucky. Um, but what I also wanted to say, um, just to, to make sure that everyone's clear, um, you know, the if the 80-20 does get flipped, by accident. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, yeah, exactly. And that's a very good point is I've worked, I think every single client I work with over the last 20 years has had that happen. Like they've gone through that, they come to the weekend and they go crazy and then they spend the rest of the week beating themselves up about it. And I go, what it happened? Okay, like it's not gonna in the long in the in the big kind of grand scheme of things in the long run. It's not gonna. It's not a problem. If you do it no. every time, if you're doing what you did on the weekend every other day, okay, that might cause some issues. But any every yeah. once in a while, once in a blue moon, and you decide to flip that eighty twenty, it's not a big yeah. problem. Like just okay, yeah. it is what it is. It happens. Now let's just get back on track. Let's flip it again and get back to eighty percent nutrition. That's one of the biggest mind shifts that I've mm. noticed. It really help people to push past any barrier they're experiencing when it comes to a healthy relationship with mm. food, because they that that layer of guilt and shame that comes with those kind of moments mm. just falls away because suddenly they give themselves permission to do what is still healthy for them within certain parameters, but they also forgive themselves for what they just did, right? Mm-hmm. And, and it's not that we're saying like, go and have a massive binge yeah. every week. We're not necessarily recommending that, but what we're saying is like, if you understand that actually, if you're good 80% of the week, 20% of the week, like you said, is fine, right? Yeah. So, so they know they've got a, a party coming up or a brunch or something like that on the weekend. They just be mindful of it throughout the week. And then you can go on Friday or Saturday or whatever and flip it the other way around and do 80-20 the wrong way. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'd, I'd also, you know, say, you know, when when people do, when, when you do eat good quality foods, um, you know, vegetables, um, really good meats, really good fats, um, or if you're a vegetarian, you know, good um, protein. Um, it would be to, you know, start to think about, um, start to become mindful of how that food makes you feel um, and how, um, and the benefits you get. So if you pay really close attention to um, how you feel after eating those foods, um, you, you'll, you'll probably, you might notice just the benefits. I mean, for example, um, I always know when my 80-20 is, 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 is shifting more towards the flipping <laughs> um, because it, I can feel it in my mind straight away. You know, I, I'm quite prone to brain fog if I'm not, you know, if I'm not watching my diet too carefully. So um, I now really appreciate um, good quality nutritious foods because I know that it helps me to think really clearly. 
And, you know, to start to recognize the benefits of eating that food, um, you know, that really helps, you know, to keep your passion about the AT, you know, really embracing the AT, um, you know, just, just the, the benefits that it gives, you know, just paying attention to that. That's really good advice for anyone listening that is kind of maybe even a starting point or just at a point when they know something needs to change because, you know, we're motivated by pleasure or pain, right? And we're just so wired to be motivated by the pain. Whereas what you're saying there is actually saying, no, 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 focus on the good, focus on the the good feelings that come from it, the extra energy you get, the clarity. And and I love the fact that you've related that to kind of mentally how you feel because so many people I think disregard that and think food equals body. And they they sometimes lack that association with how the mind can affect you emotionally sorry the, how food can affect you emotionally and mentally as well I mean that's that's a really that's a really interesting topic that I that I'm really passionate about as well um you know if if you're if you're thinking clearly and if you're as sharp as you can be then you can start to um you know think broader and wider um you can start to you know if if you meditate for example you you can have better meditations um if you have a clear head um you know you can start to think outside the box you can start to be more creative because you know you've got your your brain is as sharp as it can be um but then obviously if your if your brain isn't functioning you know as well um because the diet isn't quite supporting it then you know it it can, it can it has a potential to kind of hold you back from your from your best self um so you know that that's also something to to consider and you know that's something that I'm definitely embracing myself as well mm. nice all right so listen just we've got one question that we tend to ask everybody that we have on as a guest and that's like in the last five years what new belief or maybe habit or thing that you've started doing what's improved your life personally like the most given everything that you've been kind of going through in the past and now what you're venturing into as well yeah um do you know what this is i mean this is slightly off topic from what we've just been discussing, but it is something I've I've taken on board um, in the last year or two, um, and that is um, I'm I'm in the habit now of just writing everything down, um, you know how I feel um, every day. So um, journaling, basically, um, I have to say, um, you know, in terms of how, you know, e- even with you know the the nutrition. Um, course that I'm doing and you know what I want for my clients what I want for my business um, it's all made it to the pages of my journal and because I'm journaling it's it brings a sort of clarity that I don't think I would have had before Um, so I would say you know that would be the main thing Um, you know it's it's really and it's going to continue to help me um, you know going forwards with the nutritional therapy and then whatever else I'm I sort of get into um yeah I'd, I'd say journaling is a, is a big thing for me I'm with but, you on that I'm yeah. with you journaling is a game changer and I my clients don't hear me say this enough I don't think but I'm sure they disagree <laughs> I'm they always do. talking about it <laughs> the um the thing that I find with journaling one of the one of the best benefits and why it would help from this kind of nutrition mindset this kind of topic today we've been talking about is because it heightens that level of awareness like we just said about like the, the benefits, if you're journaling, you're actually taking the time to reflect it. You don't miss it. You don't suddenly get busy and go into the next thing you're going to do yeah. because you've actually noted it down. And you said quite rightly earlier, you know, we start to rewire our, our mind in the way that we think about things and our habits. So if I'm starting to now create this neuro association with eating fruit and feeling good or eating vegetables and feeling really good, now I start to have more of a loving relationship to maybe those food groups versus some other food groups that may be not so nutritious. But then also, um, what you know, if, if someone if, if someone has a goal, so let's say they do want to eat better or they want to feel better, they want to think clearer, you know, that's the sort of thing that, you know, goes into the journal. And what I find is if, if you repeat it enough, you know, if you think about it enough, you write it down enough, it becomes so clear and it becomes something that you just cannot miss anymore and you have to start addressing it. So, you know, if one of your audience, if they say, you know, they want to start to eat, you know, well, and they want to start feeling healthy, you know, if it makes it onto paper, you know, every day or, you know, a 
few times a week, you know, it will start to it will start to get in there and you know, they'll start taking action. It's more likely to, to force you into action. Um, so that's that's another reason to just write things down. It's so effective. It's so effective. Yeah. Is that, is that the one piece of practical advice? You've already given loads of practical advice today, but is that like the one? If they were to take away any of the nuggets that you've shared, is writing it down? Is that the one that they should take on board? Um, I would say yeah, because um, I, that has 100% worked for me. Um, so I can say from first-hand experience, you know, yes, it works. But then also, you know, you hear so many other people's lives who have been affected positively. I mean, like you just said, Charlotte, as well, like for you, it just impacts yeah. you in a really positive way. Um, I would say, yeah, writing writing stuff down is is really good. Um, your goals is, is a really good thing to, to focus on writing down as well. And that, that could include eating well, exercise, but then, you know, any goal that you have, I just write it down and then things will start to happen, right? Like exactly. the universe starts to, you know, conjure up stuff and it starts to yeah. make you know, synchronicities and exactly. Yeah. And things become it's it's it. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a podcast for another day. You're you're definitely coming <laughs> back on to that. One hundred percent. That'll be a good one. Before we kind of wrap up and finish up, tell us where or tell our listeners where they can find you. Um, so I have a website, um, tomorrowwalpole.com, and um, I'm just sort of in the process of putting together some um, online programs for the future. Um, I'm not qualified yet, so um, I can't, um, you know, offer too much at the moment. But um, it's definitely in the pipeline. Um, I'll be, you know, qualifying very soon. So. Um, just watch this space when it comes to my website um, but then i'm on the usual social media platforms facebook um, instagram tomorrow all poll nutrition um so yeah i'm just i'm on there and uh just watch this space nice it's going to be exciting space to watch i'm sure i'm already loving what you're putting out there so i've got no doubt that moving forwards you're just going to be putting even more value out there and helping so many people and that's 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 really inspiring to see from our side and I know it will be for the people that you work with as well and just want to say and for you guys as well like I think you're doing such um excellent excellent work and you know I'm inspired often by what you guys talk about and you know I'm just I'm really happy that you know I had a chance to kind of chat to you like this it's just it's been really lovely for me so thank you very much thank you very much you'll be the first of many